Everybody, welcome back to a new and exciting and special episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. All things Vanderpump Reunion Finale. It's finally out. We finally got to see it. We will have a lot to get into to break down the reunion. Certainly just a lot to dissect. We are all here ready to get into it. And I don't know, I don't know what you all think about the 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 reveal people listening, but did no surprise. I don't think it was I think we were all hoping for something a lot juicier, but whatever. Still a wild, wild episode. What do we have to get into before we get to, to Vanderpump? What's going on? Oh, by the way, it's, uh, it's the households here, Allie and Amanda and, and Derek. It's, a, it's been a long, long day. And our pop culture correspondent, Natalie Joy, is with us as well. Why don't you, intru- why don't you introduce Kiki? Mm. Uh, the house dog? Yeah. Yeah, Kiki, Aww. house dog, household. The household yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. Allie, Amanda, Derek, and Kiki. Here we go. Oh, she she said she went right for the kiss. A little make out. Oh my god! On Take me on a date first. I weeks. know. I'm Kiki. engaged. <laughs> uh, what do we have to get into before we uh, get to the reunion? Well, a woman on the dark web, <laughs> Natalie, our pop culture correspondent, made me aware of this story. Yes, I'm I'm aware. It's wild. So a woman paid a hitman. Mm-hmm. To kill the wife of someone she matched with on like a dating site. It's so bizarre. And can you bring the picture up of this woman? She I looks should. like, it's like the sweetest they're gonna make their her apps, name is literally Melody. They're actually they're absolutely gonna make like a lifetime like a movie about this. Uh, Melody Sasser was arrested May 18th and is being held in custody on probable cause that she allegedly attempted murder for hire. She is accused of transferring about ten thousand dollars in Bitcoin to a site named online killers market in exchange for the murder of the wife of the man she met on a dating site. Wait, the site was called online killers market? Yeah. <laughs> like, Terrifying to me. She, she just googled like online killers and that was the first and thing. And she that didn't came think up. that maybe, you know, the FBI it might be watching that one. But sister was obviously not in her right mind. Well, also, what is the web design like for a website like that? Oh my gosh! Like, do they have a do they have an about us that. like an FAQ section? Like, what? I'm so I've never been on the dark web. That, it scares the shit have, out of is me. That, is that pink hair dye? Is her hair dyed pink? No, I don't think so. Isn't that fell. <laughs> She's an environmental. <laughs> well, she just specialist? looks so. She looks so. It's like blonde hair. Can't. She looks see like it. the friendliest librarian at your school. Yeah. She has a beautiful smile. I think yeah. there's some pink hair. There's some rebe- I'm just saying the pink hair could be a sign of some rebelliousness. I don't know. And not that everyone who has pink hair is about to like hire someone to kill her husband. I'm, just, I'm not saying. I'm splitting hairs here. She just looks like she's running the pilot gives the bake back. sale. The she, bake sale. She looks like, the, like she's the church the bake-, bake sale. Or the, you know. She looks like she just said, no, you can go ahead if you have to go more than me in the bathroom line, like to a stranger. Yeah. Yes. She let someone cut her in the longest TSA line. Yeah. Because they were. Wait, is that her mugshot? <gasps> yeah. No pink hair, Nick. Different. But does look scary when not smiling. Well, I don't know if that's a mugshot. She's against a brick wall. That looks like it's a mugshot. definitely a mugshot. Yeah, you don't take a mugshot <laughs> in front of a brick like, wall. Anyway, wait, 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 read the story. It's, it's, the, the story is wild. It's, it's ridiculous. Sasser and the man she met had become hiking friends, according to the complaint. But when Sasser's match revealed he was moving out of state with the woman he planned to marry, Sasser allegedly turned to the dark web, the complaint said. Under the pseudonym Cat Tree... Sasser allegedly posted her hit order on the website, authorities said, quote, it needs to seem random or an accident or plant drugs. Do not want a long investigation. Sasser <laughs> How posted. inconvenient that would be for her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd rather not. <laughs> it's also like, what was your plan, girl? That was her plan to have, that, to have him that killed. Was her plan. And then like at the fu- like at the funeral, just be like, mm-hmm. I want to be there for you through this loss. Yeah, I guess. Slide back in. Go on. Go on. So Sasser had also showed up unannounced to the couple's home in Alabama in the fall of 2022, authorities said. I hope you both fall off a cliff and die, Sasser allegedly told the pair after learning the pair's plans to wed, according to the complaint. Around that time, the soon-to-be wife of the man she'd matched with reported that both sides of her car had been gashed by an unknown perpetrator. The woman had also been receiving threatening calls from untraceable numbers, authority added. 
And then she's telling the hitman to make it look subtle. Like, bitch, she's come like, on. I don't want a long yeah. investigation. I know that I have been like, so like has anyone threatened messages. you in the past? You have know? you made any enemies recently? Yeah. Has anyone said they want you to die? Yeah. And so she was like messaging the hitman, like telling them all, like everything that she knew about this woman's routine and was like, she went for a two mile walk today by herself. All yeah, she these- was stalking her on a fitness app. Nuts. Oh this woman my. was going in deep. She was all in. This is not like a moment of like sheer like losing her mind and like. Do we think she was dickmatized, <laughs> or just hikematized? What a special dick! <laughs> Endorphins, you know, maybe kind of like an oxytocin situation of like yeah, you're always yeah. hiking. But yeah. like, I get being jealous, and I, maybe I, I I even get like having a day where you say something like, "I hope you two fall off a cliff," you know, maybe. But the most insane part is that the follow through. She, she followed up. Yeah, she follows up with them. She says, "I've waited for two months and eleven days, and the job is not complete." She, this is two her message ago, to the uh, yeah, said it she She's on. like, "I want to speak to a manager, <laughs> literally, <laughs> of online killing market, <laughs> and it would be done in a week. The job is still not done. Does it need to be assigned to someone else? Will it be done?" Period. What, what is, is the, the delay? delay? Period. When will it be done? She wanted to speak to a manager. Y- yeah. She's <laughs> literally like bringing it's- Karen energy to this. <laughs> wild. Wild. Really, truly wild story. I, this is a, such a normal looking person. Like, seemingly normal person. She's in like a gymnasium in this photo. <laughs> if she could be a killer, anyone could be a killer. I would love to hear her... Uh, Side of the story? Her, yeah, her defense. You know, is she going to plead not guilty? Is she going to plead guilty? And is she going to be like, listen, this is what I, I need. I She's like, need- you don't understand. This other bitch sucked. You know, like, what is she going to say? That, I like, need She this- seems so calm about this. I need this to be on Crime and Network. And I need to be able to watch it like I watched Johnny and Amber. I want to see this bitch in court. Make it public. Make it public. But it's crazy. She's from Knoxville, Tennessee. And She's she, from Maxwell, Tennessee. And she drove all the way to Alabama, which is like hell of a drive, yeah. to go to their front door and confront the two to then say, I hope you fall off a cliff and die. Man. Babe was Whoa. making moves. Has there ever been something Melody. that <laughs> makes it more clear you are not friends with the person you want to date? Like they were not friends when like they were f- hiking together like friends. Like. This was insane. Like they should have like, I feel like this is in defense of being like cut off your situationship immediately. Obviously, there's other things going on. This woman is deranged in some sense. And I hope she heals. But like whatever the hell happened, it like definitely like was spurred by the fact that she kept this person in her life and kept obsessing about him. Yeah. Who, do we have a picture of the guy? Dickmatized? Yeah. Probably. I bet he's going to be the most astoundingly average looking American man you've ever seen. Uh, no, it's right there. there, no. there there's a picture. No, it no looks, that's a 13-year-old boy. No, no, no. The related content. Oh. She's a picture of her hiking next to... Yeah, there's a small photo of Is that him or the hitman? I assume it's no. not the hitman. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think a hitman exists. I think... I think, I think she got the FBI. on the dark web. <laughs> yeah. His name is David Wallace? <gasps> the, 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 uh, David Wallace from The Office? Like Wait, the CFO him? of Dunder Mifflin? That's the guy she was willing to kill for? <laughs> Nick. Oh, he looks very kind. He does so look did really she. cute. <laughs> True. But wow. their relationship soured in 2022 when Wallace left for Alabama and his then fiance Jennifer. God. Listen, wow. I'm also in connected connection with this. I am on TikTok for you page of women who are like getting into cars with hitmans, but like aren't actually hitmans. They are the FBI. And they're like recording the conversation. And these women are like, I want to kill my husband because I want the like insurance money. Is whatever. it just women wanting to kill their husbands? No. I don't know. I The only ones I've seen are women and they like get into the car and the guy's like, all right, well, if I do this, like if, if like this is our last conversation, I'm going to do it next week. So like, are you sure you want to do this? And they're like, yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like we've been, what, where, but, why, then you have not shown but then me it's, this? <laughs> but then it's fake. Are you and taking it's not a real notes? <laughs> <laughs> no, would never. No, honey, I love you. But um, they and they're obviously not real hitmen. And so yeah. then they like go, they arrest the woman and she's in like the invest the ter- interrogation room. And they're like, you wanted to. And she's like, no, no, it wasn't me. It was the, the hitman. She's like, can I just see my husband? And then she sees the husband. And he's like, no, literally, fuck you. Like, you're trying to murder me. And it's like the way that she asked them to do it. Like, she goes into so much detail with this random hitman that's not even a hitman. 
that's what I'm saying. It's the detail. It's just when you're writing them and they're just like, you know, if you they are going to be running here, at what point do you say, do I really want to do this? Like, at what point are you thinking, this is nuts. This has got an out of control. Like, I, like this woman I'll is just like, move on. No, I'll the, just move on. This woman on TikTok is like, please, like, do it fast. Like, I don't want him to suffer. Like, I don't want, like, can you just like, I don't know, maybe just shoot him in the head. Does, does that go fast? And the hitman's like, mm, I don't want to do a gun because the neighbors can hear. She, he's like, she's like, could you like strangle it? Like, is a strangulation fast? Like, she's <sighs> asking all these questions of how to murder her husband. Like, she's buying a car. Like, she's like, four wheel drive? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> what options does she's it like, come and with? Does the roof come? Does the sunroof? Or <laughs> no? Like, oh my holy shit. God. Yeah. So, wow. bitches be crazy out here. Wow. So, uh, get out of your unhappy relationships. Crazy. Like, just file for divorce, babe. 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 Like, we don't need to kill. <laughs> I know paperwork sucks, but <laughs> you're going to do a lot Jail more a when lot you go to worse. court. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Never been. I did tour facility once. Why? No, I was arrested for shoplifting when I was like 13. Actually, I didn't even. Okay. I was friends with the wrong people. And my mom okay. kept being like, these girls, you're friends with the wrong people. And I was like, literally, mom, I'm just trying to live my life. Like, leave me alone. And I kept hanging out with them. And then we were in Dillard's. I think I'm banned from Dillard's because of it. And I was with the two girls and they were like, um, can you put this in your bag for me? I was like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want anything. Like, no, 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 it's for me, it's for me. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I put their miss me jeans, which are like $100 jeans in my bag. We go to walk out. Everyone in the store is staring at us as we're walking out. We get outside. The manager's like, excuse me, um, ladies, can you come back in for a second? And we're like, oh yeah, sure. One girl throws her bag into the bushes. We walk inside. The other girl throws her bag into an aisle. So I'm the only one holding <gasps> the bag. We get into the like the back room. There's three cops in there. And I immediately start sobbing. I'm like, I'm supposed to go to New York. I'm supposed to be a model. Like, I can't go to jail. And they bring in the bags that the girls threw. The cops then like walk us through the entire mall. And there is nothing to do in Auburn, Alabama. The only thing to do is go to the mall. So I'm seeing the preacher, my principal. Like my grandma's best friend, like walking through in handcuffs, oh, 13 years old, get taken to the jail. They call my mom. My mom has to come pick me up and I have to do like community service. I have to write my mom a letter, read it to the court. I have to do like some course and I have to tour a facility because I could have gone there. God damn. Wow. So don't steal. <laughs> Words to live by. All you 13 year olds out there yeah. or just in general. Yeah. 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 It yeah. could have been a lot worse. A lot and worse. if your friends, if your parents Yeah, if your think, mom is like, hey, friends are the wrong people, you should probably listen because they probably know. Yeah. So. Wild times. Wild times. Speaking of wild times, Pete Davidson's on the phone. Oh, my. <laughs> so. I love Pete Davidson now. For anybody who's not aware, Pete Davidson recently bought a dog from a breeder. PETA then spoke out against that, uh, saying, you know, there's so many like dogs in need, like this is unethical. It was very upset with his decision. He then left a voicemail for PETA. And in this voicemail, he starts off by being like, first of all, I'm allergic. So I have specific needs. He's uh, like, hey, guys. It's uh, Pete sister, Davidson. I love this this is Pete Davidson. <laughs> yeah. And then he like mentions the specific PETA employee who released the statement. And then he starts by being like, you know, I'm allergic. That's why I did this. Like, maybe you should Severely ask some allergic. questions. Yeah. Like, also, our two year old dog just died. Like my mom and I are really upset about this. Like we're going through a hard time. Like, can you do your homework before you start like running my name through the mud? And he does. It escalates a little bit. And by the end, he does say, suck my dick. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you and suck my dick. I think he said. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I think it's amazing to go out there and yes, please adopt a dog if you can. That's a wonderful thing you can do for all the animals in need. But yeah, like people do suffer from allergies. It's a real thing. And to be alert, like, and it's not as easy to just go and get any dog. And then, yeah, there are extenuating circumstances. You know, it's very, I, God, I couldn't imagine, you know, God forbid something happens to Jeff. It's tragic. It's like losing a family member. And like, here is Pete Davison simply just thinking about his mom, his mother, who, as we all know, tragically lost his and father, sister. right? And he just wants to love on his mom. And here PETA is going out there. And I can only imagine the vitriol and the hatred and the trolling that resulted from what PETA said. And again, like support PETA and then advocating for animals all day long. But like, come on, you know, like that's that's a, that's a, honestly, a, I honestly think that's a form of Internet bullying. Uh, I think people are always, you know, and that selective outrage is, is a, a, a 
the wonderful Chris Rock has said. But love, love Pete Davidson for standing up for himself and just like stop putting your nose where it doesn't belong sometimes. That's all I'm saying. And again, please adopt a dog if you can. It is a wonderful thing that if you can do just such a wonderful thing. But again, not everyone's situation is the same. And, and maybe we shouldn't shame people into doing what you want them to do. I will say the PETA statement at least feels like it's future oriented as opposed to just being like shame on like you're bad. It's not their place at the what time. What did PETA say? So PETA said it's tragic that Pete didn't seek out a borough born mutt from a city animal shelter because a scrappy New Yorker with a charm, personality and unconventional handsomeness could have been his perfect match. Since shelters in New York and across the country are overflowing with homeless animals, PETA urges Pete to show some big heart energy by adopting, not shopping in the future. Yeah, it's completely unnecessary. And again, put yourself in Pete Davidson's shoes at the time when, when she's lost a dog. He's dealing with that loss, his, his, the pain and sorrow I think of his he mom's. said like he hadn't seen his mom and sister cry like that in like 20 years. Yeah. Like, what was and this? it's just like, can you imagine reading that and being like, fuck you guys, stop sticking your, fu-, like that condescension in their message of like, you know, I mean, again, we love PETA, we love animals, but it, they don't need to fucking sh- call out every person, especially, as Pete said, without doing their homework. I don't know. But good on Pete. <laughs> Fuck you and suck my dick. Yeah. <laughs> and also, shout out to him for leaving a voicemail. No one's leaving yeah. voicemail yeah. these days. Right? Yeah, what, a, what an old school move by Pete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a renaissance man. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we wish his mother uh, and his family and his sister well. Me and uh, his sister a... follow each other on Instagram. Oh, uh, do you? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, how about that, Flex? DM her and ask her how the dog is. Yeah. Yeah. We wish them well. We wish them well. And I, it seems like PETA had the, maybe the best intentions, but like, I, again, like that clearly, you know, Pete David is someone who struggles for mental health. We know that I can only imagine the, without question, Pete was flooded with hateful messages as a result of PETA's statement. Without question. And I don't know, I just think they should think twice. Yeah. Internet's crazy. Yeah. Like a swarm of wasps. All right. Well, I think it's time to get to Vanderpump Reunion. Uh, before we do a couple housekeeping notes, don't forget we have another episode of Better Date Than Never live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. The topic of the day is one night stands. According, this is, These are Allie's words, not mine. Uh, she's like, finally, something I'm good at. Uh, <laughs> so Allie will be... Uh, Sharing her expertise tonight live at 9 p.m. Eastern. (laughs) Uh, But it'll be seriously a fun and wacky episode. The the comment section is always entertaining and fun. It really is just a community of people sharing their dating stories, their horror stories, their successes, their best practices. Quite honestly, people learn a lot and they they make friends. So check it out uh, live tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern on AMP. For all you Bachelor fans out there, we're going to be doing the, the bios, the men's Bachelorette bios uh, coming up. Look, look, for, look out for that. We have some great guests lined up for you. Don't forget, Vile Files Plus is available for all you update special lovers out there. We drop two update specials every month in addition to the one we drop on Vile Files Classic, plus episodes of Better Date Than Never that are not live. And we have our Vanderpump recap coming up starting from episode one. It is going to be wild, all you Vanderpump fans out there. I just started watching season one, so many thoughts and opinions. And if you want to watch it with us and recap it with us, uh, check out Vile Files Plus. Let's go to vilefiles.com to sign up. It's a seven day free trial. So it's like there's no skin off your back just to check it out. And also, don't forget, send in all your questions at asknick at thevilefiles.com for all things uh, Ask Nick, Vile Files related, texting office hours, sweat in the wedding. We have an amazing sweat in the wedding call today, this episode. So stick around for that uh, in between our recap. All right, let's get into it. Breathe some life into your backyard with FastGrowingTrees.com this spring. That's right. From shade to fresh fruit to privacy and natural beauty, let FastGrowingTrees.com help you plant your dream garden with their expert advice and fast, reliable shipping. It's really amazing their service that they have. They actually send you trees. I have a wonderful olive tree in my backyard. And Nellie and I have been really kind of upgrading our backyard and, and putting different plants and trees and fastgrowingtrees.com has been making it super easy and affordable. Also, we know we're getting the right trees, you know, making sure that like the trees that we get are getting the appropriate amount of sun and things like that uh, with the advice that they offer in addition to just getting the trees and they, they ship it right to your door. It's, you know, you'd think, how can you ship a tree? Well, they do. It was remarkable how easy it was. 
ready to go, ready to be potted. With FastGrowingTrees.com, you get customized recommendations based on your specific needs. Plus, their plant experts are always available to help keep your plants growing healthy through the season and beyond. They gave me some advice on my lemon tree. It was great. I loved it. Now we have a, a plethora of new lemons uh, popping up. Right. And I was looking for my parents because, you know, Massachusetts, very different weather than California. They have a whole map on their website to kind of show you what zone is what. And then for every single tree that you're considering, it will tell you which zones it will thrive in. So you're making sure you're getting something that you will be able to use and enjoy from the growing season and beyond. With FastGrowingTrees.com, your order online and your plants arrive at your doorstep in just a few days days. And with Fast Growing Trees 30 Day Alive and Thrive Guarantee, you know everything will look great fresh out of the box. Join over 1.5 million happy Fast Growing Trees customers. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash V-I-A-L-L now to get 15% off your entire order at fastgrowingtrees.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Need a break from reality? Feeling down? Well, cheer up, Buttercup, because Paramount Plus has your great reality escape. Escape into new seasons of the biggest competition shows out there like Survivor, Big Brother, The Challenge, World Championship, with the boldest personalities like the Stallones of the family Stallone, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars, Queen of the Universe, and the wildest drama like Are You the One? Plus hundreds of previous seasons, all streaming at your fingertips. See, reality ain't so bad. Your great reality escape awaits you at Paramount Plus. Stream now. All right. Well, we just watched the Vanderpump season 10 reunion episode number three. That's a mouthful. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Whew. Well, we have the household with us. Uh, Allie, Amanda, Derek, our oh, pop culture correspondent, Natalie Joy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, a new yeah. addition to the household, Genevieve. Everyone clap Slay for Genevieve. Time. Yeah, well, our new editor is with us. We figured we'd just let her sit in uh, and share any thoughts that she might have. So welcome, Genevieve. Thank you. Hey, Yay. her first words out of her mouth. Thank you on the show. Memorable. Yes, yeah. really. Wonderful start. We love that. All right. All right. Well, what do we all think? I think first reactions. We are Jocelyn Jeff's here. Jeff is here. Yeah. And so he's if you're watching, right into the- if you're watching YouTube, it's going to be a bit chaotic. It's it's nighttime here. He's now seeing himself. He sees squealing. himself and he okay. loves it. Loves it. All right. There we go. Well, our our worst fears came true, and the fact that unfortunately, I don't think uh, the hype of the last five minutes lived up to the expectations of anyone do we i don't i didn't see any rage on online so i guess maybe that's good news but like nothing really i guess what i find most confusing is this this whole notion that like who did alex baskin think might need to to reconsider uh whether they wanted to come back on the show or whether they wanted to sign another contract because that was what we were basing all our guesses on i mean and honestly like thank you alex for like the content because obviously we got to talk about it we got to guess we got to make predictions but nevertheless i'm just trying to think short of him just like kind of mike fleicing it and for any of you who don't know who mike fleiss is he's the creator of the bachelor former executive producers recently fired from his own show you know he he's infamous for just you know blowing a bunch of hot air yeah, uh, on twitter are we missing something? Was he who who could he have been speaking? Potentially about? Sheena, because I feel like Sheena was already really upset that her wedding was kind of like engulfed in drama about Katie and Christina Kelly being there. And then also like there was like the kiss. So I wonder if Sheena would just feel like it was so disrespectful. I mean, because of her wedding. If, yeah. Yeah. But it's like the, the bridge is burned. Like there was she's already swapped your head out on our wedding photos. Like, yeah, I don't think right. it's yeah. make it any worse. <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, Brad was right. And he's just like, I don't, we don't really think it's anything, but it wasn't, it wasn't even really timeline related. I mean, other than the fact that we got, we saw Tom got caught in many lies in a group setting. Yeah. But other than that, just a kind of a, an unnecessary buzzkill. Right. Because if we hadn't gone into that with this headline of like, there's going to be a reveal, it's going to be groundbreaking and thrilling, then I think there was a lot to talk about in terms of like Ariana's demeanor, like kind of Raquel's demeanor, the way everybody interacted with one another. Like there was a lot there to unpack. But I think because it was all caught up in the hype of this alleged like bombshell, 
it's just like I don't know. Yeah. I, don't flat. I mean, yeah, producers got to, you know, hype their show. It's just one of those things instead of, again, like we said last week, instead of talking about just how like, wow, what a great season, you know, other than episode number two of the reunion kind of falling a little flat for some people. It was like episode three. I thought was jam packed. Certainly a lot of drama, a lot of yelling, a lot of conflict, lot, lots to discuss. But like we opened up the show like talking about like, well, that was not. I think exciting. Tom Sandoval's comment about Ariana wearing a T-shirt during them having sex was a lot more yeah, shocking right? than whatever Raquel had to say at the end. Exactly. And it was basically Tom, if I understood him or in the group, because I was like, what the fuck did he just say at first? But it seemed like Tom was, it was like a dig at- Seemed like it was. It, it was 100% a dig at Ariana. Was, yes. He basically suggesting that like, because it, it came from a comment of like, Raquel, did, oh, Tom, have you slept with anyone else post Raquel? And Ariana chimed in, yeah. He, he slept he, with he me. He slept with me. And to which Tom responds sarcastically, sarcastic, very sarcastically. Yeah, it was. You, you were had, wearing a t shirt. It was so fucking hot. Like suggesting that like she was like fucking lazy. It's Tom's, that's Tom's narrative. Tom's narrative, this kind of victim mentality that, and that's an, like, that was another. That was like Tom justifying his actions. Like even in that moment, he is still feels justified for his choices. And even like another thing that we all kind of talked about too is like how much Raquel apologized for lying, but didn't really seem to, she seemed, that's what she seemed to be most sorry about, like the lying about it, but not the action itself. Interestingly enough, when it comes to affairs, Esther Perel has said that most people, when it comes to affairs, like they feel bad that they hurt their partner, but most people don't regret it. And so this would fall in line with Esther Perel. For those of you who don't know who Esther Perel is, she's a kind of a well-renowned um, therapist, psychologist, doctor. Thought leader. Thought leader uh, on relationships and infidelity and things like that. Has a really good tech t TED talk out there if you're interested. Anyway, um, but yeah, that would be in line with um, what she said because just just the constant apologizing for the lying and, and constantly saying how oh, I hate lying I can't believe I lied I'm so sorry for lying it's not you know it there was way more emphasis on that than regret about the fact that those two you know are in love per them yeah what a question that Raquel had no problem answering two questions do we think starting with Raquel do we think they actually think they're in love? And do we think they're in love? Pose that for both Tom and Raquel. I think that if they weren't in love, then this is really fucking, it just adds on to how shitty it really is. Like you better be fucking in love and you better like spend the rest of your fucking lives together if like this is how you chose to go about it. But that's kind of what Tom Schwartz said in his like first ever podcast interview this morning was I told him you better marry this girl for everything you've put me through, put everyone through. This better be worth it. Yeah, but do I mean, we think they are? Essentially, because they've been sneaking around in an affair. So it's like been this like addictive cycle where they feel horribly guilty and they're terrified of getting caught. And then they have this like thrilling moments of getting to fuck each other at the wedding. Now we know. And so it's like during that whole thing, they were sneaking around. They never had to confront like, are we compatible as a couple when we're at rest? Like, do we get along with each other? Because it's always so forbidden and exciting when they got to see one another. And then... Then the whole world turned on them because their absolute fuckery got exposed. And so it's like we've had they've had no time to go off of to simulate like daily life or like what it would look like to exist with one another because they've always had outside forces that were conflict. And that's I feel so like true. when whenever you have an outside force, that's a conflict. It's kind of easy because it, I think there's inherent tension and it just becomes like an outlet for that. And then when you don't have that outside thing and it's just the two of you, you sit there and you realize like, oh, we are incompatible or, oh, this is boring and We're unexciting bored as sometimes. Hell. Yeah. And I they don't, don't know that. I think Raquel wants to believe she's in love and has convinced herself she's in love and clearly has no problem saying it. I mean, to Natalie's point, when Andy asked, she was like, yeah, I mean, I'm in love with this guy. She said it multiple times in that episode. And for Tom... The only th the only reason that Tom said it was out of kind of this loyalty for Raquel. Like he was trying, I think, to protect Raquel and felt bad her being on an island and couldn't possibly say, you know, not really. I just essentially liked the sex. 
I think if Tom was really honest, he would, that's what he would have said. I just yeah. liked having sex with her. It was about the sex. It was about me. It was about Tom uh, getting that validation and, and feeling like someone was into fucking him, you know, as opposed to what he accused Ariana of. I also just feel like, hanging out with Raquel is like the emotional equivalent of a blowjob in the sense that she's just like there to make sure you're having a good time and like there to make sure like you're pleased and you're happy. And she said, like, I'm a big people pleaser. And I think she's really molded a lot of her behavior around like being nice and being liked. And then especially with men, like being fun. Like that's how so much about like what Tom Sandoval said was he was like, you know, it's like she's low maintenance was like the implication of all of it. Like she's just a good time. She has no expectations, obligations for me. And so I feel like Raquel is someone who is just like goes into that setting. No, she's good at it. It feels good for her to be liked by people and to feel like, oh, I'm the best hang. Everybody's having a great time. But she's not actually like fulfilling any of her own needs or showing up as herself. She's just molding herself to what other people like might want. Yeah. I don't, it, it's just like a kind of a, her, her comments about, yeah, even just saying like, oh, I only, you know, I was only care, I was a people pleaser and I started caring about myself and it just, that was less, maybe as honest, I guess, but I feel like it was more that she decided that she, she was going to say that because I think she thought it felt, sounded good. You know, I think in her head, she probably rehearsed. Clearly these people all kind of rehearse what they're going to say and what they want to say and it it sounds in theory good, but like, and Lala kind of pointed out. So like, wait, the first the first thing you did is like fuck your best friend's guy. It's just like, fine, you were a people pleaser your whole life, so now you're gonna lead with that. Yeah, you know, may, maybe just like cut in front of a line or something, or you know. Uh, I will say I am very happy to have heard Lisa Vanderpump express like watching she's well, I don't remember what her exact quote was about something about filmmaking or the film but watching um her buy the the lightning bolt necklace watching her have that conversation with Ariana and like had been fucking him the whole time and Lisa like expressing never how, in my 10 seasons that footage yeah yeah, yeah and like yeah. the the Sandoval going as Raquel for Halloween yeah and Lisa was like oh, it's yeah. so bizarre yeah like <laughs> yeah, I, bizarre. it, was, it yeah. was really it was I think because she's been lighter on the on Sandoval and Raquel it was nice to hear her be like that was fucked up like yeah. You fucked him and then you do you were doing all of these things on camera. She would have to watch back. like you knew what you were doing. Why were you doing that? Do you think he knew what he was doing or you think he just didn't care? Or do you think he got off? I think he on mm, doing it. That was part of the thrill. Was doing it in front of the cameras. It's like when you've committed a crime or a murder, although this is anywhere near that, and the murderer stays around the scene of the crime for a little too long. Or they go back. Oh, they yeah. Why yeah. start to make mistakes? Because one, it's thrilling. And, you know, two, some of that is they want to get caught. I don't know if they wanted to get caught, but it's thrilling. Yeah. Like, I, I think he was in love with the situation. She was probably in love with him. You okay. Know? Good point. That's a, this is a great, excellent point, Genevieve. Welcome to the show. Thank well, you. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sister <laughs> Vanderbilt. Yeah. Um, what was more fucked up? Um, T-shirt comment, uh, reaction, Raquel and Tom off stage, so to speak. Um, just that whole incident. And there's like details we'll get into, or what I kind of think is the most fucked up is Tom's mom, like coming into town and meeting Raquel and like have like a, it's like, hey, I want you to meet my mom. She's... And did he and did he say that my mom called her a whore or something? Because I heard Ariana be like, yeah, she I is. I missed that. No, 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 no. Wait, Ariana like... was saying, did she call her a whore? And I think Tom was making fun of Ariana. Like, yeah, my mom called the love oh, of my, my the new love of my life. Oh, a whore. like he, yeah, I, he I was think he was oh, kidding. mocking. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, what they were saying. But, but I found that it. to be really fucking bizarre and like a really bad beat for uh, Tom's mom. I know this woman's already out however many thousands of dollars she lent a quarter of a million dollars and you're just like your son's like fucking your his his like let life, down after life let partner. down after let down. And I would maybe we can get Tom's mom on here because I'm just wondering like if you know we know Tom to be an untruthful man. Uh, 
who and made who knows? him this May- way? Who knows? Maybe his mom came to town and she's like, you two got to stop this. You know, this is fucked up. I don't know. They both painted it as like a, like mom comes to town to meet the new girl. Like, and why wasn't Tom's mom like saying, hey, this is fucked up or it was wrong. All she said is this is this is not this is not good, guys. Not like, what are you doing? I they think said, said in the last weird. episode, they love you, which is when Raquel said, I well, love Tom, you too. Tom said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. About, no, that was episode one. No, oh, about, I think it was about her family. Oh, the, the, no, that was the, yeah, the finale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The last yeah. episode, he said, they love you regarding his said, family about too. Raquel. Yeah. And that's when she had the slip up and yeah, said, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, love I love you, you too. too. Yeah, yeah. So clearly his family is somewhat on board. I just don't believe anything Tom says. So I don't really know. You know, he had no problem lying when they like, did you have sex at the house without hesitation? No. And then someone said, someone, I think it was James who just kind of like chirped. And, and no, he said they said Tom said it was one time. It was just the one time. And, not at the house. And and James looked at Lala and said, we all know it wasn't one time. In, in general, to sex, yeah. yeah. And then, in the addition, house. when it came to the house, so like he was kind of claiming, like for a really long time, they'd had this one night stand. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. But I'm saying but he denied having sex at the house. Full stop. And and then James said something, and then Tom was just like, "Oh, sure, you know everything, James." Something like that. I think Andy asked, "Have you hooked up at the house?" Because because Andy knows Tom sticking to sticking yeah. to the lie. They haven't had sex. He said even no to that. Yeah. And then that's when, and you even said while we're watching it, that like Raquel, you could tell that Raquel. She like looked nervous. It's like yeah. she, she looked wanted, at the ground. Yeah, yeah. Like she, I feel like, like they went into that situation. Obviously we heard that he coached her and I feel like Tom was like, we're not going to say this. We're not going to say this. And we're not going to say this. And she's like, okay. But then once it, I feel like it was finally there and she heard that question come out of Andy's mouth and she, then she heard Tom Sandoval lie about it. I do think. It like made her nervous. And I do think like she panicked a little bit. Yeah. Well, and then Tom Schwartz is saying, I was in the hot, hot tub with him that night. There was no hanky panky happen- happening. No shit, Tom. I would hope they're not doing it with you in there. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel Join like Tom, on in. that's yeah. him saying like we've fucked girls while the other person was in the <laughs> yeah. same room. Like, yeah, we've yeah. been in a hotel sure. room with two double beds. He's like, I, 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 brought someone he's home. Like, I've been in a hot tub and watched Tom Sandoval fuck someone else. Or and like, I just like, finger I was just like models. on my phone, like paying, playing Tetris, like whatever, you know, like, yeah, that was him kind of outing himself as if like, oh, OK, like they 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 could have started something after you left. Right. And kind of going back to your question about like, you know, all of the fucked up things and which is the most fucked up. I think for I think me, the mom one for me. Well, the mom one would really fuck me up if I were Ariana because I would just be like, are you like after all the Christmases we spent together? Sure. Yeah. Like I get if you're going to stand by your son, I get you're not going to cut him off. But like, no, like standing- she also hasn't heard from them. She has not heard a lick from Tom Sandoval's family. Oh, that's right. Ari- no one has Ariana said a has thing not. to Ariana since all of this well, has that happened. tracks having watched this. Yeah. Because, yeah, you can. You know, you're not going to abandon your your kid like, you know, everyone else might. But like, I, I was shocked when Andy asked that question and Tom wasn't like, uh, to be totally honest, she expressed, she, she said, we need to stop it. I, he, she insisted that I tell Ariana. She made it very clear that she not approve of this, yada, yada. Like, none of that. It was just more like, yeah, we gotta use that. you guys are in a mess. Like, ugh, how do you get out of this one? So bizarre. It just kind of goes to show how these, like, you know, the the Toms just seem like it really speaks to, like, who you surround yourself with. Kind of r- really kind of is a testament to how you, like, the, your life choices. That really goes back to me shoplifting at 13. Thank yeah. God I'm not. Yeah, still never. You, you drop those people. Thank, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. I think also, like, with the T-shirt comment, I, I, fucked up for so many different reasons. Um, one first and foremost, like it, it's just so displays how it's like he's interpreting as like, are you kidding me? Like that wasn't even hot when it's like, maybe she's not comfortable around you right now. Like maybe she doesn't feel sexy and she doesn't want to rip her clothes off because you're spending no goddamn quality time with her and you're not listening to her. And also she's spoken before, like with Raquel about like feeling self-conscious about her body. So to then like twist that as like, it was so unhot, it just struck me as like, one of the most like disgustingly like of like you can keep your fucking mouth t- like shut tom but it keeps going along with everyone's keeps saying tom stop saying i'm sorry but even schwartz said stop saying i'm sorry but 
And everyone, that was Ariana's whole point. You fucked her and then you fucked me. That was his butt. His butt was yeah. saying you had a shirt on. So like, fuck it you. Didn't yeah. Count. yeah. 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 Well, I mean, like, if, I think if Tom and Raquel were really sorry, instead of leaving the stage and then, you know, cleaning each other's eyebrows and... Which is like such an intimate thing to do. Like, hold on, you have a little something. Let me just like get that off. Oh, yeah, they, let me just they're, clean they're, you up. The, the shame just wiped away from them as soon as they left the stage. And like that, that was another thing. When Raquel left stage, it was, we all thought it was like, oh, it's because it was the kind of the verbal assault that was being laid on her. And then she just like, no, I just need a sip of water. It's like, oh, oh my God, she's this thirsty. I mean, she probably did need a no, break I, from I that. I know, but, but like, why just, just, just acknowledge that, you know, why yeah. didn't, well, you know, because there were moments on stage where I started, like, again, it's not that I felt bad for Raquel, but like, you know, that's the thing. It's just like Tom and Raquel are not the only people who have made this mistake, you know, to Andy Cohen's point, like a lot of people have made this mistake on this show. You know, this show opened up with Jax Taylor having sex with a stripper in Vegas, gaslighting his entire friend group to believe him instead of Stasi. And then convincing everyone he didn't do it only for it to be true. I mean, like, so these, like, the moral compass on some of the cast people is, is not exactly, like, true north. Totally. And I think with Raquel's expression, like, I was just thinking a lot about how, like, my kind of, like, theory about this was, I, I feel like if growing up in the pageant world, like, she was just kind of always told to, like, put a smile on your face. And that, like, she was, like, put in the position where in like she'd be in competitions where it was high stakes and it was nervous and she had to just like smile and look composed and like be pretty and be nice and be like whatever all of those things you know are and I think she's it I don't know it just struck me as like someone who's like really not even capable of like processing or emoting and like how the fuck are you supposed to work through and make good decisions if you're not even naming the emotions like I feel like sometimes people stop at the emotions they're like I'm pissed so I'm gonna do all this and like with Raquel, it was like, do you even know how you're feeling? And like, maybe you do on the inside, but like from an outside perspective, it feels like you don't even allow yourself like. You don't let the emotion bloom into something. You just like nip it in the bud and are in like survival mode all the time. That makes me really fucking sad. Yeah. But like, that's the thing. There were moments and glimpses of, of having empathy for Raquel in the sense of, OK, maybe this like Tom. I'm, He's 40 years old. Like this lost guy. Lost cause. Lost cause. I'm sorry. This man should be upselling me a gym package in Florida as like the sleazy assistant manager with too many buttons done on his shirt. Like this <laughs> yes. man was never meant to be on a national stage. He does not have a good character and he does not have a good personality. Like he's yeah. a fucking That's dad. He I think he's here. always yeah. been a dad. I, I Maybe I'll rewatch the earlier seasons and I find oh, something redeemable. He literally redeemable. started out as like a casting call on the hills as like a model sitting in a director's chair shirtless. No, I don't think character mat matters to many people in this cast. Like I don't think they consider character when having this decision of whether they want to be friends with people. It's like, can does it's this person ambition? Yeah, does this person give me access? Do I think they're fun? Will they protect my secrets? Can I, you know? Things like that. Not like, do I do I think they treat others around them with respect and courtesy and love and consideration? Like, I don't think they, I don't even think that registers with, with some of them, especially Tom. But with Raquel, like, I do, like, you know, I want to think that, like, she, she's not a lost cause. Again, she's relatively young, you know, I, and yes, yeah, she's an adult. I'm not saying she shouldn't know better. I'm just saying, like, I think people, if they're willing to, can make changes in their life. I think if she, you know, there's the, all these discussions about her, you know, being in a mental health facility or, or whatever. And even she referenced tonight, you know, Lala very harshly called her crazy and said, you need mental health. You need mental help. And, and, you know, Raquel humbly said, I, I am, you know, can't, yeah. can that could not have been a, that, that seemed like a, an honest, vulnerable moment. And I want to believe that Raquel can learn from her mistakes, learn that she treated all these people poorly and, and maybe do some like discovery, in, uh, you know, her childhood, some maybe potential trauma and kind of evaluate that. Like I, I, I do, I, I hope surely the best for her. I do think Tom was a terrible influence on her. I give Raquel a little slack because I think Raquel is always an outsider with this group. We've made friends with, Natalie and I have made friends with some of them, but this, this group, of, of cast people from me watching all of season 10, starting to watch season one and, and see, seeing a couple of episodes, they're incredibly clicky. 
They are, are very kind of, you know, rite of passage in terms of will we accept you? Will we won't? And so here's Raquel, who is always treated like an outsider by many of the cast for a long time. And she must feel like she's constantly auditioning, constantly performing, which, again, yeah. goes back to her not being connected to herself and making horrible choices. Yeah. And so she just gets some validation from a guy like Tom. It makes her feel special. Again, this is not in any way justify or, or excuse her actions, but it does make me think that she was manipulated and that Tom being in a position of power, being an OG on this show and, and you know her thinking well if i get in good with the toms and i'm i'm in good with the show you know there's a little bit of a sympathy and then yet they leave the stage go into the back room and after this verbal assault by all these people the only thing raquel really cared about and this is an observation courtesy from friend of show girl boss town who who dm'd me the only thing she really cared about was the comment that was made about Allie, that james upgraded from Raquel to Allie. And that, of all things, is what bothered Raquel. All the nasty things that Ariana said and Lala said about Raquel just kind of brushed right off. You're like, yeah, I, uh, that, that didn't matter. She was called a dementor. Dementor. Like, that's an She's insane. like, I know you like Harry Potter. You're a horrible person. <laughs> Did you see the slight face change, though? Like, she yeah. went from like, Mm-hmm. I know I'm here to repent to my sins. And then she was like, I know you like Harry Potter. And there was this moment of like, I'm going to fight for Hogwarts. But she was like, hold it back. Yeah, yeah. She has like a fucking lightning bolt <laughs> <laughs> necklace. It's starting to like vibrate. Ugh. It's full of magical powers. Yeah. But then, like all she really cared about was that comment about, about Ali. I thought another comment that was so significant was when she told Ariana that she didn't really trust her and that Tom was the only person she confided in. That made me really sad. And it, and I, it just feels so sad because I think Ariana is so trustworthy. And like, even with the growing closeness that like Raquel had to Ariana, like there was still some level. And like, I think you could probably trace it back to pageants. I don't know if that's the truth, but like of like a fundamental distrust of other women or not believing that like there would ever be like harmony or sisterhood or like support that there will always be a fundamental level of like competition for men. And, you know, you Which, have to like let people show up for you. Like you have to put yourself out there. And she never did that. Like she never let Ariana prove her wrong. Like I think she could have done so much like healing or like made so much progress if she just like tried to be a little bit more vulnerable and kind of confront the stuff she was feeling head on as opposed to like shoving it down and then just being on this like horrible like merry-go-round of bad choices. Which also I think good for Ariana for calling her out and being like that was crossing a boundary. That was inappropriate for you to confide yeah. in Tom. And you to consider me to be one of your best friends was inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. That's like emotional affairs. Stuff. Like a f that was your first fuck up. And like you, sh you shouldn't have gone there and you went there and like it should have stopped there and it didn't. Yeah. And, and like, like and kind of like up. what was your motivation for allowing Tom to have that information? Because, you know, when we want to connect with people, we we're more willing to be vulnerable. You know, it's like I want to open up to you because I want to see, uh, you to see me for who I am. And here is Raquel saying, well, I've never felt seen before. And that, yeah, that, that all came around the time where Ariana was like, I've seen you. And then, yeah, then like it, Raquel's like, not like Tom has, which is like, that's, that, that was one of the most frustrating parts. It's just like, you know, you know, you're going to get your ass whooped by all these people and you apologize. But every opportunity, like the whole, well, Lala and James, you fucked. And then James reminding us that he's only 25. Uh, James loves to remind us that he was uh, he was too young. But like, why don't you just just say yes? I'm wrong. I'm sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. Like Raquel did that a couple times. Tom never did. It, he never just like took his ass whooping and just acknowledged that how like just yeah, I was wrong. I was wrong. I have no excuses. I was wrong. I, I was waiting for. Uh, either of them, especially Tom. I think Tom had a Tom had a chance to do something where I don't think it would have like certainly I wouldn't have erased anything, but it would have been I think a moment where we could have saw some like human in him. If instead of that whole back, you know, room scene between him and Raquel, if he would have said to Raquel, "Hey." I'm really sorry I got you into this or like something like that. Like if one of them po apologized to the other for like the role they played in kind of being a temptation to the other, like none of, none of that between like, again, I don't think they're in any way sorry for what they did with each other. I think 
they are only sorry they got caught and hurt Ariana and had to lie about it. I mean, Raquel even admitted at the end, the big reveal, that in Mexico, she was like, I told him, like, we can't see each other. Like, the temptation is just too strong. But then I heard him drunk in the hallway and, like, had to save him because he didn't know where he was going. So I just brought him into my room and, like, sat on his face. (laughs) And, like, no biggie. But it's, like, it all... Yeah, All it's right. like, because when I'm looking for my hotel room, I find uh, penetrating someone is really a helpful <laughs> way of no, finding that hotel same, room. Same. Like, like, it really, like, like shakes the brain sounds a little like bit. sounds like awful yeah. sex if he was that drunk that he couldn't even find his room. That's like, an amazing point. Questionable at best. It's also sad because you know her heart fucking soared when she heard his voice outside of her room. You know, she was so fucking excited. Oh, yeah. She looked out that peephole and she wet her panties. <laughs> yeah, she did little sicko do we think because some people have have commented um do we think in any way that ariana lala or anyone was too harsh did it ever get to a point where it was like that's like it's getting mean and unnecessary i think it goes back to our debate that we had about what it takes to be the perfect victim because i think ariana has been just i mean we saw her on the show just dealing with the immediate ramifications of finding this out having to live in a house with him she's crying she has to have her friends support her and so it was it took me aback just like how she kept firing things at people and i was wondering are is she gonna you know lose a little bit of support because of how harsh she's being i don't think so i think obviously she is granted i think a pretty big hall pass to like yeah. Voice what I, I mean. This is, I think, her first time seeing Raquel, first conversation with Raquel. I think so, yeah. Because all Raquel texted yeah. her was like, I don't know what to say, but like, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so, um, so. She I'm included just, three so's because so, she was so, like, so, I did something so, so. bad. Do you imagine? So. Do you think she was like, yeah. should I write a fourth so? Or do you think yeah, three She fucking enough? calls into like, texting office hours yeah. and is like, so. Like, what do you guys think? Do you, do you <laughs> read this for me? Like, ooh, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> uh, like, ooh. I think she gets a pass. I think Lala. And James might, if anyone's going to catch any criticism, I think it would be them just was like you like it didn't happen to you. And like, I get you're angry, but like. Yeah, I can make it. It's hard to make a case for James a little bit, maybe just because of the Raquel of it all. But. I don't know. I mean, it was his fiance that his best friend like. Yeah, I get that. breaks just like any sort of guy. James had his moment of of of. In the first episode, like he had his moment of being sad about the friendship with Tom. You know, to be honest, he's in the seemingly happy relationship with Allie. Like, I don't know how much fucks he should give about Raquel fucking up her life post their relationship. So much of season 10 and the reunion episodes have made me feel like James has been activated in a way where if I were his current partner, I would feel really uneasy about how emotive he was. Like, obviously, I don't think he's thinking of Raquel in at all of a positive way, but like the amount of emotion that it elicits out of him, like makes me, would make me really wary. He says he's in therapy. I hope he pursues more of it because yeah, I mean, he's funny. He's comical. I, I, I don't know him that well. We hope to finally get him on the show at some point, but yeah, he, he's a reactive guy. And, and, and that reactiveness can, I think could be if at a minimum frustrating and at times potentially scary. Yeah. And I think, you know, therapy for him could, you know, I know he says, well, I don't know if I need therapy because, you know, people on TV look a lot different than me. But like therapy just helps you manage your emotions in a more productive way and helps you more maturely react to the things that you feel. Yeah. You know? And I think he he is justified in his feelings, but how he reacts to him is sometimes a bit uh, uneasy. But I agree with you. I mean, as far as Ariana, like. Listen, like when you find out someone has cheated on you, like you are kind of, I think you're allowed to say fucked up crazy shit that you wouldn't otherwise say, you know, oh, like yeah. the name calling that might come from you and the things that you say, like eventually Ariana, it seems like she already has, will kind of get over it. And, you know, I don't yeah. think she's going to always have this type of intensity towards those two. But when you find out someone's cheated on you, you you're like, oh, you want to learn every fucking ick you've ever given me? Yeah. Let me list it and out, you motherfucker. Wanna, and you want them to feel pain. Like, you want to hurt them like they hurt you. And so, you know, I totally give Ariana a pass for, she, she was clearly trying to be as mean as possible. And she, I think, accomplished that. And I think she is allowed to 
to do it. Lala, I give a pass in the sense that because I think this is a very triggering mm -hmm. uh, yeah. situation for her. And I think, yeah, all that bullshit about, you know, the whole Randall of it all, the mistress of it all, like having it being thrown in your face when all Lala was trying to do is take accountability and then make Raquel literally feel better and kind of try to bring her up, you know, earlier in season 10 by acknowledging like I've been a mistress. That's not her saying I knew. Admitting to being a mi mistress. mistress. That's yeah. her saying like I've been called that before. I've I've been. And I've survived. Yeah. And, like I'm fine. I got stuck in that situation. I've been. Yeah. And like. It's... I think that just goes to show like the way that Raquel. I think she takes everything that is said like she. I don't think she can see any like sarcasm or I think it's hard for her to like read between the lines. I think she just hears what you said and that's and takes it at face value. Yeah. Well, that brings you to the point of in the end when Raquel was crying and about lying, I don't think she, those were fake tears. No. I, I, I think those were real tears. I don't think I saw a tear. In the very end? Yeah. I feel like I just saw a lot of like mouth movement, but maybe. Maybe. I, th I felt like she was sincere in that moment. You yeah. know? Because she didn't have to come clean and sit down. She was going against the one person that was an ally for her and admitting to shit that he did not want her to admit what to. What if Tom Sandoval uses that as a reason to not date her? Oh, it wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah. But I just want to say, like, even in that, whether she, there were real tears or not, she was still smiling. I mean, mm -hmm. she was... At least, whether even if she's pretending to cry, she was still smiling. It was like, I, I do think she has this very bizarre thing where she has this permagrin, and I think it's just really, like, hard to read situation. I don't, I don't think that means that she's a sociopath. No, I think it means she's been deeply conditioned to never express her emotions or she's been in environments where that wasn't safe and that doesn't justify any of her behavior. But no. I do think it provides Roll like context. The tapes on her lunch with Peter when she aged out of pageantry. Those were that was real emotion. Those were that's tears. A good, a yeah, point. but that was less complicated was emotion. It was just like that was less complicated. But was she smiling? I, I don't remember her smiling in the way she's smiling I don't know now. if we were nitpicking. Well, yeah, was was, there, was Sandoval I've, out at that point? I've seen clips of this online since it's aired and I'm like, Oh. Bring it back. Let's watch the tape. Roll the tape. Roll the tape. Yeah, I will say on the topic of like Ariana and her demeanor, like I didn't like watching it. And that's not I don't judge her at all. Like I think she has every right to be super upset. And I think it's so frustrating and ridiculous when we put people through hell and then expect them to react perfectly. Like that's insane. She should she has every right to be like hurt and lash out and angry. But like I really didn't like watching it as a viewer. What do you like? And, and what, what do like you it mean? made me really sad about this situation. Yeah. OK. It just made me feel really, really sad. Yeah. Because like, even 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 when Ari, Ariana was being petty. And there there was petty moments from her, but I fe think justified and in her pettiness, I feel like she was the most petty is when they were asking if those two were in love. And imagine Ariana having to sit through Andy asking these two about whether they're in love or not. So what other reaction is she is supposed to have other than mocking those two and, you know, and coming across as petty and like trying to like make fun of them because she doesn't know what to say other than like, this is hysterical, you know? So like uh, torture. See, she's smiling there. Well, there, there she's not. I just, <laughs> Peter's faces during this lunch. He's literally like, what? Kill Kill me. Also, the fact that Peter was supposed to be a main character on this show blows my Wild. mind like season one episode on uh, one peter is on, in almost every uh, oh, in she, every other she's scene not smiling at, that's like actually it's a different cry yeah D yeah you can still see teeth no but she's it's a different she laughed cry. she she's i think she laughed there. because she realized she's on a date in public and she like peter. <laughs> oh rocket money hey all you people wasting money on unused and unnecessary subscriptions that you downloaded a while back and now that you're paying $5.99 or $10.99 or whatever it is, it's amazing how many people are wasting money that they don't even realize. And Rocket Money is here to help. Not only they can identify the apps that you're not using, they can cancel them for you. That's incredible. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. 
Rocket Money saved me, I think, over $1,000 once I uh, I used it. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are you are one of them. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscription for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses. So you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. That's just the average. Rising prices stressing you out? If you're looking for ways to cut costs, Rocket Money can help you out with that as well. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way. By going to rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Hey, it's Manscaped, and they're here to help you or your man in your life make sure that everything is looking trimmed and groomed and not uh, unmanageable. As if I said it before, I'll say it a hundred times. If they don't have Manscaped in their life, they are using your stuff on their balls. The Manscaped's performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to prepare for that summer bod. They have built the ultimate grooming bundle for your summer grooming. The Lawnmower 4.0 features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. I myself have been accident free. It's like one of those things like in a warehouse for like 100 days without an accident. I'm on like day 764. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor. That sounds aggressive, but either way, it's, it's safe down there. I'm telling you, they got great uh, deodorant, man, a man, even a man who uses it. They have incredible underwear. Everything that Manscaped does is uh, designed perfectly for men. So get the men in your life the gift of Manscaped. Manscaped will even throw in two free gifts to their Performance 4.0 package, the Manscaped boxers and the Shed travel bag. And those boxers are incredible. Silky smooth. When summer comes around... People are whipping out their toes and sometimes people got some winter toes in the summer. And if you don't want to see that, uh, the Manscapes uh, has an amazing little nail kit uh, that has tweezers. It has nail clippers. It's all super high quality. Everything you could possibly need to keep those toes looking good and ready to be seen. If you ever looked at your man and thought, yuck, chances are they need Manscaped and you can help them out now. Get 20% off with and free shipping with Code V-I-A-L-L at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code V-I-A-L-L at manscaped.com. That's M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or get left behind. Was there um, any kind of lines of the night? Like, because I was pleased to watch Ariana lash out at Tom Sandoval. Like that in contrast to Raquel, which I like found really upsetting to watch. Like the Tom Sandoval stuff, I was like, put him in the casket, get him. <laughs> and so were there any like lines or kind of like moments of the night that particularly stood out to people as like, I mean, them? Lala being like, what was, I'm always at my best type of thing yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Lala yeah. at her finest. I'm always at, at my, my finest. finest. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Tom Schwartz had a very interesting question to Ariana, which obviously ended up in her she actually, pretty emotional for the first yeah. time. Um, him asking like, how the juxtaposition like it was a weird of, question but yeah. nonetheless like Ar- ariana Tom, how kinda, is this hate felt well ariana i'll flip it back to you how is this love felt <laughs> like i was like where are we going i also feel like Tom andy just cohen hates conflict so much it's insane yeah yeah but i'm also like if you're andy cohen you gotta be like thank you tom because like he's they, flipping his card he's that like that was my next one have been two worst people like yeah. you know like that yeah. was a lot of the like emotional grounding of this reunion and it was from Tom Schwartz's question. I think, um, you know, one that probably was stuck out to me was how Sandoval, you know, is sobbing, crying, which I I do believe that the, that was a real. Uh, I, I think I I think his I think world he, is, is. Yes, he feels sorry I, for himself. Uh, maybe. But I, I do think it was real tears. Um, and him saying, like, I will be cheering you on from afar. I believe and, like, that. And then Ariana being like, I will not be cheering you on at all yeah <laughs> ever well yeah but it's not a it's it's not like a nice thing f- for tom to say you know because tom's level of indifference towards aria but it, it's it kind of comes as across as indifference oh i wish you the best i don't really care you know oh my god how you doing it's like running into your ex and then pretending that they're like 
oh my God, I just, I want them to do so well in life. Why? Because I don't really care. I am so over them. I'm so past it. Like if you're on Ariana, that's how it must feel in that moment. Like Tom trying to be nice to Ariana, I think just comes across as a big fuck you. Yeah. And she's also probably like, fuck you. I don't need you rooting for me, bitch. I thought that was very interesting that they seem to cut that clip out of the accusation towards Sheena. I mean, that must have been in protection to Sheena because, you know, like, you no know, one likes an accusation like that and making Sheena defend herself. It doesn't make sense that Sheena knew uh, beforehand. It, it, hard to believe that she would have uh, that. I mean, I don't know if, if, if Sheena's trying to be an actor, so I don't want to in any way suggest that she couldn't be an incredible actor. But that would be a performance of a lifetime if she had known and then still gave that performance. It would have been a performance. Immediate Emmy. Because yeah. she was the finale of the that finale. She, was the, the like, final she brought the... the house down. She yeah. was the headliner. Her being like, you call her friend. Like, you know, like she, she said yeah, what Logan everybody you needed. You call Meredith and we pick up the pieces of what you broke, which is what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. And, and scene. Give Ali an Emmy. Yeah. And then, and then I thought to myself, well, maybe she knew about like a, like a, like Tom Sandoval or Tom Schwartz, where he like knew about like what he thought was like a one-time hookup. But even that doesn't really, doesn't really track. I think it was more of a situation where Tom and Raquel thought to themselves, Sheena must know. And they never confirmed it with Sheena. And they assumed that she knew and they kind of told themselves she knew and then decided to make her a scapegoat after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. I think it. I think that's where the truth lies. Yeah. I think uh, we're going to take a, a, a moment, a moment from Vanderpump. We have an amazing sweat in the wedding caller. Uh, I think one that uh, you might have a lot of opinions out. We'll get to that. And then when we return back to Vanderpump, we'll talk next season, what we hope, what we think. Some, how do we think the season's going to play out? How can they go about, you know, these, you know, kind of factions of the, of the uh, people? In the on the cast, and uh, and then we'll close it out. Let's get to sweat in the wedding. How's it going? I'm good. I'm Olivia, and I'm 29 years old today. All right, happy Ooh. birthday, happy Olivia! Birthday. All, right. All right, thanks. All right, what? Uh, how can we help, Olivia? So I'm not sure if I should have my dad, stepdad, or no one walk me down the aisle for my wedding. Okay. All right. When's the wedding? Congratulations, by the way, on the wedding. Thanks. It's on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Okay. What, what? How did you come to that date? I'm curious for people who get married on New Year's Eve. I just thought everybody's always looking for plans on New Year's Eve. And so why not throw a party? That's okay. actually... I like that. I, I yeah. kind of agree. I and mean, there's other holidays where it's just like, really? You're going to have a party? You're going to have a wedding on this holiday? But like, I hate New Year's Eve. Yeah. If she gave me I a reason agree. to dress up. Something to do. It's kind of I it's brilliant. Eve also, so now yeah. I'm gonna love it. There you go. <laughs> you know, exciting. All right, and that's this year coming up. So it's coming this year, around yeah. the corner. All right, why are you torn? So I have both my dad and stepdad are in my life, serving as kind of father figures. When I was in high school, I was on the homecoming court, and I had my stepdad walk me down the football field for homecoming court. And I remember my real dad just being like completely crushed that I chose my stepdad over him to do that for me. And at the time I was only 17, I felt a ton of pressure from the fact that I lived with both my mom and my stepdad. And I just felt kind of like more nudged to have my stepdad walk me down the football field at that time. And now I just think the whole tradition is stupid to begin with, to have somebody walk me down the aisle. But I guess like that, it's okay that I chose my stepdad over him. It's my dad who walked me down for my wedding. But my dad also hasn't ever really like provided for me in a fatherly kind of sense. I put myself through college and anytime I asked for help, the answer was always no. And now he's offering to give me money for the wedding. And I'm like, that's great. But I needed that money when I was starving in college. You know, I don't really need it now. Did he have the money? To yeah, your knowledge? I, did. So I applied for financial aid and I was denied because it showed that he could provide for me. So how do they figure that out? I'm curious. I mean, I don't. It's it's the weirdest thing because they don't actually ask if you're going to be paying for it in full. They honestly will ask how much your parents make. OK. And then they'll base it off of that. Is that like a trust system? I don't really know. But I always thought it was an odd thing because there were people who exactly like Olivia were in a position where their parents might make a certain amount. 
but they were in no way helping for college. And the university would just say, oh, no, your parents have too much money. We're not giving you any. But to be clear, you're basing your assumption that your dad could afford it solely on the fact that you were denied financial aid in college? Yes. Okay. That might be a <laughs> bit of an, a reach on your part. I, I don't know. Maybe he's sitting on a pot of gold, but I, I don't know if that would be accurate. Uh, yeah. Per se. But he's offering now. Yeah. No, that's fair. I think the fact that he's now offering to give me a little bit of money for the wedding, then I'm just like, where was that willingness back then? What about your just relationship in general with your dad, minus his like financial support or lack thereof? It's always been fine i would say we we don't catch up too much he got remarried when i was 18 and my stepmom has four kids of her own so i just feel like he has like too many people in his web to keep too close of a relationship with me and my other siblings but he catches up with me every now and then and we have a fine relationship it's not like there's anything super strange I does guess. he reach out to you or is it like constantly you putting forth the effort it's more so me putting forth the effort i would say option three was to have no one and that i'm assuming based off of i don't want to hurt anyone's feelings so i'm just going to yeah and also because i just think it's really stupid to have somebody walk me down an oh, aisle when, okay. Okay. yeah when i'm able-bodied i can walk myself well, i just I like really don't like that tradition okay well if you don't like the tradition then maybe that solves the problem but I, do you really feel that way or is that you saying it because deep down you're afraid of making a tough decision? Because clearly the tradition's not there because uh, like the brides are incapable of walking. It's not about, <laughs> you know, I don't think that, it, I don't know the orange of the tradition, but I don't think the first time a father walked down, someone down the aisle is because the bride couldn't walk and they like picked her up and he's just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But if you're yeah, not, if you're not into the tradition and you think it's stupid, case closed. But my sense is that it's more you avoiding a tough decision. So you've convinced yourself that it's stupid because like, if that's how you really feel, then what's, what's the problem? You just say, Hey, yeah. stepdad, dad, just a heads up personally, this ain't for me. I don't want to do it. It's my wedding. And I want to do X, Y, or Z with, you know, you to honor you. Whatever that is, you know, could be this, could, you know, but as far as us walking down the wedding, I, I just, it's not about you and it's not about dad or stepdad. I, I just think it's dumb. I and mean, that's, that's an easy decision. Yeah. I think I just feel like I need to make right, reconcile the whole homecoming court situation of walking down the football field with my stepdad. And I was annoyed because I told my stepdad like, oh, since I had you walk me down for homecoming, I'm going to have my real dad walk me for the wedding. And he said, oh, but that was a high school thing. That was stupid. But at the time, it felt like the entire world to me when I made that decision. So it made me feel really bummed out that now it's like, oh, that didn't mean anything, but this does mean something to me. Are you doing a uh, father-daughter dance? Because you could have your stepdad dance with you and your real dad walk you down the aisle. That's what my real dad said. Oh, he even offered that. Real dad even offered that. Because I was like wondering if we were, real dad would be like sad about that. I just want to remind you, one, this is your wedding, not theirs. I'll be really, really disappointed in stepdad, quite frankly. Because it sounds like stepdad is guilting you into having him walk you down the aisle. Maybe he's been a wonderful stepdad, but it's not, it doesn't sound like real dad's been some sort of deadbeat dad. And divorce is a funny, tricky thing, you know, and things like that. And so he did have that honor. And it is a bit dismissive on his part to call it a high school thing because it is important to you. But more importantly, it clearly was important to your father. And it's very convenient for stepdad to just dismiss it as nothing. Yeah. When clearly it's not nothing to both you and real dad. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. <laughs> and I'm, 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 I'm sitting on a letter here. Is this a letter from your father, real dad? From my real dad, yeah. Do you, who, wants to, who wants to read it? Natalie? <laughs> um, I, I mean, okay. I will, yeah, he, he's got some very... Person. Handwritten note on some sort of letterhead. Yeah. Very old fashioned. Okay. As is yeah. my family. Which honestly is he 
is, is, is a green flag. He took the time to sit down and write this out, which should mean yeah. something. Okay. My dad would never. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it's very appropriate that we have Natalie have opinion on, on this particular subject, but just between you and me. I don't have the best relationship with my father. He wasn't around much. I don't have another, I don't have a stepdad, but I do have two older brothers who I thought about walking me down the aisle. And then, you know, it's just like my dad is sick. I don't know how much longer he's going to live. And like, this is the most, one of the most important days of my life. And I would love to like be able to look back at photos and show my kids one day, like, this was your grandfather, like me and your grandfather, like he walked me, this is what, like, this is my dad. And like, have that memory with my father is like something yeah. that I, I really do care about, whether he's been a, a good dad or not, you know? Yeah. Dear Olivia, enclosed are a couple of my favorite pictures of your engagement. You and your husband are a beautiful, handsome couple. I am so glad you found each other. Uh, I was really touched by your fiance's willingness to request the opportunity to be able to ask for your hand. My wife and I want to contribute to the wedding. We would like to contribute $6,000 to this beautiful occasion. Sunny Delight, what a great princess name for you. You have always been a positive light, a sunny delight to me and to so many others. God has gifted you with an amazing, sparkly personality. Next week, I am going to Uganda and I will return mid-May. When I get back, I will call you. I would like to continue our discussion regarding my request. Would you allow me the opportunity to walk you down the aisle at your wedding? This is the moment I have been looking forward to almost since you were born. Oh. Also, this is the moment I referred to when we had... Oh, God. Had... Uh, Arik? Had lunch following your homecoming. <laughs> I can read men's pen. Also, this is the moment I referred to when we had lunch following your homecoming football game, where I was neglected to a place that didn't feel good. I didn't like the feeling then of not measuring up enough to do what dads normally do. Walk us beside you and help their daughters. I love you and I will walk beside you, behind you, or even sit in the stands and support you. But I am requesting the honor to walk you down the aisle on 12 31 23. I love you always and forever, Dad, aka Papa Bear. P.S. Enjoy these beautiful pics. They are just the beginning of a beautiful life together. That was so touching. The nicest. Yeah. I mean, you should cherish this letter forever. That's really nice. I like didn't even read it when I first got it. So I was too stressed about what was inside of it. And. Well, it's very now, touching. What, what is the downside of having Papa Bear walk you down the aisle? It's my stepdad. I don't want to hurt him, especially when he's really stepped up and been an amazing provider growing up anytime I've needed it. And so if I'm being honest, it's my mom also chirping in my ear and being okay. like, this means a lot to your stepdad. When this is a selfish request from your mom. I get why mom's asking. Doesn't make her bad or anything, but it, nevertheless, that request is for your mom and not for you. And again, stepdad, I'm sure would be honored and would be glad to do it. Obviously, he's probably stepped up in many ways. Uh, we've had similar mm -hmm. conversations around these types of, but like there are other ways to honor people. In your speech, you mm -hmm. can thank him for always being there and being a supporter and Give him a shout out in a speech. You can even say, I feel so blessed to have truly two fathers that could have walked me down the aisle. And I just want to just take this moment to recognize Frank, you know, whatever your stepdad's name is, because <laughs> he has also been there for me in so many ways that I will always cherish, yada, yada, yada. To really throw in a wrench, you could have them both walk you down. So I was thinking that I would walk myself halfway down the aisle and then have them both come to me and walk me the rest of the way. But my dad has made it clear that he wants it to be just him. And he was like, you told me when you were 17, that's what you would do. And my fiance said, you are sticking to your word if you have them both walk you down the aisle because he still is. But 
I'm never going to forget that moment in high school when it was just my stepdad walking me down the football field. But when you say you would never forget, what do you mean? In what context? How bad you felt that it was that your dad? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that matters. You're 29 years old. Yeah. And that's a, and high school has been a while. And it's yet, been a long time. And yet that's, yeah. that, that stuck with you. Man, I just, this is such an opportunity. I think this is more of an opportunity for you and your relationship with your father. It's also an opportunity, I think, for you maybe to, you're still only 29. So you're super young. I don't know how old your dad is, but like, you know, life's short and it sounds like your dad's going on a trip and he's going to come back and he wants to talk with you more about it. So why don't you grab dinner with dad or lunch or whatever, or coffee, get together with them if possible in person and to say, you know, I really thank you for the letter. It means a lot. I'm so glad that you're willing to help and, and pay for it. Again, that also means a lot. I am open to having you walk me down the aisle. I'm open to honoring your request, but I have some requests of my own. And maybe those requests are, I'd like to build my connection with you. Here's, dad, here's the reason why I'm reluctant, you know, because mm. of, I wouldn't throw money, I'd be careful about throwing money in his face. Because yeah. Because again, like, it's just, you know, my parent, I don't know your, your family's financial situation, but like, you know, I have 10 brothers and sisters. I didn't get a cent for college. It's one thing to have it, but like, I don't, I just don't know if it's every, any parent's responsibility for pay to pay for their kids' college. If they can, great. But like, just because they don't doesn't mean they love you less, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I'd be careful about like, you know, measuring uh, anyone's love for you because they gave you cash. I know. It just feels like not a willingness to provide, I guess. And like some yeah, of my earliest that. childhood memories are going to my dad's house and bringing him medical bills that haven't been paid, you know? And it's not, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I get it. It's complicated. I understand. I would just, yeah. all I'm saying is this could be an opportunity to set some expectations with Papa Bear. You, you know, you have something he wants, truly. I mean, yeah. it's like a negotiation in a way, but like, you know, if I do this, these, these, this is my reluctance. My reluctance is there are times in my life where I feel like I wanted you to step up and you didn't. Every father wants to walk their daughter down the aisle, even the ones who aren't all that present in their lives. Yeah. And I have been lucky enough, and this might hurt your feelings, and I'm not trying to, I've been lucky enough to have a stepdad, to, to be totally candid with you, dad, to like pick up where you haven't always been available. And you're not saying that to guilt him or anything, but like, again, mm -hmm. you're just like, hey, I'm just going to be, you're honest with me, I'm going to be honest with you. But I want to give you this honor because of how much I love you and like how much I want a relationship with you. But if I do, this is what I'm asking of you. You know, whether it's the quality time that you want for him you know, more, uh, more of an effort to him to reach out and have a relationship. I, again, you make the list. I don't know mm -hmm. what you want from your father, but I do think it's an opportunity to make some of those requests because you are in a position of, you, you have something he wants. Yeah. Also not to, you know, wish any bad on anything, but like he's your s stepdad, like some, you know, God forbid, like you're, they get a divorce and he's not really in your life anymore. And then you look back and, and you've got these great memories with him, but like your dad is always your dad and he'll always mm -hmm. be there. And uh, I just think having him, it will, it means so much to him right now. And I think later in life, it will mean so much to you. Yeah. I appreciate my, this perspective. My gut tells me if mom wasn't guilting you and if you didn't feel bad of hurting stepdad's feelings, I feel like you want to ask dad, but you're worried about other people's reaction is is yeah is what i'm what i'm hearing from you yeah like taking yeah. all of them out of it like even taking your dad's request like uh, removing all the history and all the context like just for this thought experiment like what would you want like what would feel good for you when you like step out and your maid of honor goes before you and then it's like okay it's your turn and you're about to walk down the aisle like who who do you want next to you or do you want someone next to you yeah. Well, I feel like my dress deserves a moment. So I like initially just want to step out and be like, here I am. But then I think I would like like my dad to Your walk dress me will still have a moment way. even if yeah. there's someone next to you. My vote is have dad walk you down the aisle and then split your father daughter dance in two. Yeah. Do and two have and two. have them just dance. pass yeah. pass you off. It's yeah. your wedding. You know the fuck you want. And then I think you go to stepdad and you sit him down, assuming you ask dad, and you say, Hey, listen. I know this means a lot to you and I'm sorry if this hurt your feelings, but like, you know, I do love you. You mean a lot. And this is something I just want to do because I know it's, 
and it's, it's my dad. And I don't, I don't think you need to throw it in his face. And you could just simply say, well, I know it might've been silly for you. It was meaningful to me that you were by my side. And it was also quite honestly, meaningful in the wrong way to my dad. And I just, this is something I want to do. I hope that you accept that. I would love to still have a father daughter dance with you as well as my father. And I hope that you Mm -hmm. will accept. I do still think regardless of what you decide, you should still take advantage of this opportunity and set some expectations with dad in hopes of saying, if you want this, this is what I want from you. Okay. I mean, this all sounds very, logical to me it's just been so hard for me to think through it like clearly you know because yeah. there's so much there's so much emotion. like childhood baggage yeah. but yeah. it's nice to get an outside opinion and be like people who don't have any skin in the game well the most important part you already answered because regardless of what we think or mom or stepdad or dad you already answered what you would do without anyone else's opinion and so yeah. i don't discount that that's that's really important and everyone else should be fine and mom might like chirp and whatever and but like you know yeah you're gonna unfortunately because of the way that everybody has like made their opinions known in this situation someone's gonna be slightly disappointed initially like Mm -hmm. someone is so i think first and foremost even though it's frustrating like like letting go of the expectation that there's some way that you can play this where nobody's gonna be disappointed because someone's gonna be a little bit disappointed and they're adults and hopefully they'll be able to like handle that disappointment, get over it in a few days and then show up for your wedding with their head well rested after months of time to be excited about a father daughter dance or excited to walk you down the aisle and prove to you why they want a relationship with you. Like, I think it's just like, I think maybe you have this impossible standard that's preventing you from making a decision. And I think just totally. saying like, you're going to disappoint someone that's not a failure on your part. That's a like indication that people have competing needs. And it's really tough. And I think the sooner you kind of set yourself free from this debate and this minefield to trying to figure out how not to step on toes super hard, you'll get to enjoy this day and like reprioritize your needs. Yeah, yeah. no, you're right. I yeah. like feel like I just need to make sure I'm absolutely certain before I communicate it to my mom because I don't want her to then say something that'll make me feel like I need to go back and reevaluate, which, well, so I've like stopped talking she, about it altogether to yeah. anyone because I'm just like, I need to be certain for myself before. And well, I just feel like everybody's trying to persuade me a certain way. Like, they certainly are. I don't think you need to make any decision before you sit down with dad. Maybe he'll say something that will change your mind. I think it's a huge red flag if mom's the one who changes your mind. Like the fact that you can say, well, I don't want to say anything in case my mom says, says something that changed my mind. You're admitting to yourself that your mom has the ability to essentially manipulate you into doing something you don't want to do. Let's not let mom do that. You're an adult, you're 29, and you have the right to say, Mom, I really appreciate your input. I love you, but please don't make me feel bad for doing what I want to do on my wedding. That's not fair. Okay. That's not okay. And I'm asking nicely, next time, I won't. I'm just going to be mean. (laughs) Or I'm going to cry. I'm going to have a breakdown. (laughs) And I'm going to be mad at you, and I don't want to be mad at you, and I don't want to think of you as someone who's causing stress during my wedding, I want you to think of someone who's like just make help, it's just adding to the happiness that is my wedding. Ugh, weddings, man! I swear to God, this doesn't have to be stressful. You just have to be good at like not letting people guilt you and manipulate you. And if I mean, quite honestly, if you're if 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 there's some deep rooted things going on with mom here that she has a lot of power over you, like then that gets into a whole nother ball of like me just wondering why that could easily have played a role into why your da- you and your dad's relationship took a back seat because if you're totally. if your mom is that you know hands has on. that much hands on and that much like quite frankly control over you and the ability to guilt you into doing what she wants then i'm just saying that's not a coincidence yeah <laughs> no, definitely right. so all right well you have our answer all right mm-hmm. well good luck certainly keep us posted we are going to hold you accountable so we'll Let be following up, letting us know. Goes yeah. with your dad. Let us know how it goes with dad. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Good luck. Congratulations and happy birthday. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Well, glad we solved that problem. We're back. All right, Vanderpump. Uh, before we get to uh, what's going to be next for Vanderpump season 11, we, we, I, we have yet to get into uh, Raquel's weird thruple comments. And she she seemed fairly earnest. I think she just 
needed a way to be with Tom. And like if it wasn't going to be like with just him and her, she was just going to settle for Ariana to be involved. And like she but she needed to be in a relationship with Tom Sandoval. But doesn't that in some way out Raquel for the Tom being in an open relationship comment, which Raquel and Tom vehemently denied? Right. The accusation being that this whole like Raquel told Sheena that Tom told her that Tom's in an open relationship. So why would Raquel even have the thought that a thruple was a possibility if she didn't think Tom was in an open relationship? I think there might be two separate things. A thruple is still defined. The door could be closed with three people in the I get that, but I don't think Raquel's that sophisticated. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not even trying to be a dick. I'm just saying, like, open relationship, thruple, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think I'm not, like they might be different in her head. I think they're the same. I think she thinks they're the same. I think it's, I, I think it's her outing herself that she definitely told Sheena about the open relationship comment. And her kind of answering Andy's question about like, hey, were you open to it? And her being like, yeah, like, totally. I, I mean, I would have like, I think you're right. I think she would have done anything to be with, with Tom. Well, because she, even the way she described it was, <laughs> I love Ariana as a person, but I'm in love with Tom. There was no even kind of slight, and you know, I'm slightly attracted to Ariana. It, it felt like truly it was just, how she can I get said, Tom? She yeah. said it as if like she expected us, America, to like, be like, oh yeah, I know. What well, a you, no. what a what a tough dilemma you're like, in. Yeah, you know, everybody like everybody wins. You know, if like, only that had happened. Boy, boy, <laughs> like wow, I just can't. Like, oh man, you're in, you're in love with him, and you love her. Like, no, what a but bummer. It's, like so sweet because yeah. she like wanted to date Ariana too. Yeah. She didn't want you Ariana know, to be like, left out thought... of her own life partnership. Oh my god! Uh, and instead of sleeping in the guest bedroom, they'll all just share one big bed. Yeah. I wanted Raquel to. To give me more of a reason to think there's m hope for her. And I'm not, you know, if you're listening, Raquel, if you're out there, I haven't given up on you. I agree. You know, I really, yeah, I, I think, I think Raquel can find some good uh, in, in herself and for her future self. I don't think Tom Sandoval can, I, I don't think he can. This I don't, is yeah. his second time, third time. I mean, millionth time cheating in general, but like, on a long time partner. Yeah. And so it's like you, you, how many passes in life do you get to be a good person? Yeah. He just continues to lie. Every opportunity he has to clear his conscience or make people somewhat on his side by at least telling the truth, he doesn't do it. He goes on the Howie Mandel podcast. He says the first night when he was locked out, he and Raquel just sat out in the backyard and talked for hours. We see in the show that the night he was locked out, they had sex in her car and then Ariana let him in the front door. He's like, he just continues to lie. He says he didn't sleep with anybody else. When Kristen Doty was here, she said that a day or two after Scandival came out, he had a show and he went home with a groupie and slept with her. Granted, it was hearsay, but... We're keeping up with you, Tom. Yeah. 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 I mean, I definitely believe Kristen over Tom, but... Yeah, no, I, I just don't... Yeah, I don't... Tom, unfortunately... I think if the only way I could see life changing is if he got sober. I don't think he will do that. I think he, among other things, he has a horrible relationship with alcohol and I think he's got a wicked case of Peter Pan syndrome and like he's refused to grow up and he finds constant things to like numb out or to find comfort in the moment instead of actually like dealing with his shit and trying to work through it. And he just like spends time hurling at other people. Well, yeah. And this is like his 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 justification is this whole like, I'm sorry, but like I'm human, you know, like I just. We just let feelings take over. We weren't trying to make sense of it. We're just like feeling. And I think he just. Like, dude, we're not all that... on mushrooms right now. Why are you talking to us like we're on mushrooms? But can't we go <laughs> hang gliding, babe? I want some quality time. Yeah, I know. It's just like, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, people make mistakes, but like they, they actually, when they, when they hurt people, they actually try to actually make amends, not just like say, I'm sorry, but, you know? They they actually want to people who are truly sorry want to do better and 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 hold themselves accountable and account for their sins and make amends with the people they hurt and not you know and and take their beatings so to speak. When we think about any version of Tom Sandoval appearing in the next season, like it's hard to imagine in what apart from Schwartz when anybody would interact with him. But I did see a really interesting theory. 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 
Talk about your theory. Okay, well, this was this is not my theory. This is someone else uh, commented on our YouTube episode with uh, Amy Kaufman, LA Times journalist. Very interesting episode on Lala. But they were like, I wonder if they would film at Schwartz and Sandy's instead of Sir. Because we've also seen, you know, unfortunately, RIP to one of Lisa Vanderpump's restaurants. And I thought that was a really interesting way of keeping Tom Sandoval within the show. Is if they did start filming at Schwartz and Sandy's, maybe we get like, Brett? Ah, my good friend. Or like, you know, maybe we start to get some young blood in the franchise of like those people. If Tom, Sh- ideally Tom Schwartz is fucking one of his employees, like ideally for drama purposes. Yeah. Obviously, nightmare I for everyone else. I still don't see any of them supporting their business. Yeah. I don't see any of them walking into the front door of that place. When me and Nick told Katie Maloney that we went to Schwartz and Sandy's for research, research she was disgusted and yeah. she was pissed. <laughs> She was like, you did what? Like, she was like, what? Like, why? We're like, oh, it was for research. It was like school project. She was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but like, we hated every def- second of it. I swear. <laughs> we're like, we're yeah, sorry, we're like, mom. Like, we're like, no, no, no. We And we vandalized it and we put like rodents in the kitchen and I like pulled her up in all the bathrooms. <laughs> no, we threw up everywhere. I it flushed was so gross. several tampons <laughs> down every toilet, <laughs> women's and men's. <laughs> I flushed it with my foot too. Like, I, I broke the handlebar. Well, I well, sat on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think many of the cast will um, object to that. Because I, I'm sure they would be disgusted and frustrated with the fact that, uh, and, and th- in a sense, they would be rewarding Sandoval by promoting his business and having it be a fixture on the show. I mean, more, yeah, more people would go just to like see if they could be put on Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But episodes. if that is the only way, I mean, they, they, at the end of the day, the show will go on. I think Tom Sandoval will be the first one back. I think Raquel oh, yeah. will have. Uh, I don't know if she'll come back. I don't know if she will. She has n- no, no friends. And I don't even think Sandoval is like really there for her. Yeah, she even they said push... in, the, in her last interview six days later, he's the only person I have. And I think I might lose him if I say these things because this was the storyline we agreed on. And now I'm kind of going behind his back saying all of this. Yeah. I'm well, proud of her for risking If there is an ounce of humanity in Tom Sandoval, he will not shame Raquel. For doing the right thing. You know thing. he already has. She has gotten so many rage texts and the poor girl just got out of a mental health facility. And you know he is blowing her shit up being like, how fucking dare you? You know he is. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So it's like, is there any version considering like the dumpster fire clusterfuck that we've been left with? Like, is there any version of season 11 where Sandoval or Kel participate? Like if you're the producer, well, Sandoval's going to participate for sure. How, though? Like, no one's going to do scenes with him apart from Schwartz, right? And then would people do scenes with Schwartz? Like, I feel like people would unionize and be like, if you're going to do scenes with Sandoval, uh, we're not doing scenes with you. I I think that's a bit blown over proportion, to be honest. I I really think, I I do. I think these people are professionals. They are, in the truest sense of the world, reality TV stars. You know, they're not reality TV contestants. They have been doing this for a decade. You know, this is ingrained in, in... like intertwining with their real lives. And I think they understand they kind of have a job to do. So I think they will say, you know, what they probably really feel, which is they want nothing to do with them. And, and certainly Ariana might truly like refuse to film with him or associate herself with him. But I think if nothing else, they will begrudgingly do it only to create the conflict that we will, we will enjoy watching. What if they are like, so sorry, like Sandoval and Raquel, they're both coming back everyone like you don't have a choice you have to film with the both of them what if ariana's like then i'm done with vanderpump rules because she really doesn't need it at this point uh, i don't think vanderpump i don't know what would, would the producers that's an interesting would card they risk losing ariana, ariana mm. to have the two of them yeah because i don't think she'd be afraid to be like then i'm done like well, and we actually talked about this last episode with, with Amy, you know, and like all these opportunities that, you know, Ar- Ariana is getting. And I kind of suggested that like, you know, if Ariana, this, this is a moment for Ariana. And if she truly wanted to like level up, I think she would have to leave the show. You know, I think there's, hey, I'm going to stay on the show and I'm just going to take what I can get while I can get it. Or does she use this to like, if, if she, let's say, wanted to focus on acting. I don't think she could stay as a star of Vanderpump while, like, go out for it's it's it. I think it would be in conflict. I so, mean, she was at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Yeah, like she doesn't need Vanderpump Rules anymore. 
To be fair, though, she was there with two other Vanderpump people. She was sure, there with but Lisa I think they Lala. got invited because of Ariana. Mm, if this was yeah. ever a chance for her to leave the franchise, it would be right now. Right now. Yeah. But what does she want to do? I wonder yeah. if the only version I could see is potentially if something about her, the sandwich shop, like to be there to kind of show yeah. herself as a business owner. I still don't think I agree with you That's that a, like she's probably better just like using this as the beautiful springboard that it but, is. But you make a great point, though. Like, would that be kind of like leaving Katie behind? Maybe not. I don't know. I mean, or the, like maybe she, maybe something Ari- about her doesn't maybe, need Vanderpump maybe, Rules. Maybe Ariana could be like more like a, a like a Charlie, right? Well, I don't know. Like, where like maybe Ariana just kind of comes back here or there, but she's kind of she's doing, graduated. She's graduated. She's doing other things. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I like don't the know. guy she's seeing is in a, in New York. He's a New York native. She just she's selling her house in L.A. What if she's just like, you know what? No, like I'm done with L.A. I'm done with. Vanderpump Rules, like I'm gonna. This is my New York era. Yeah. What if she yeah. has a New York moment? I would Maybe. love that for her. I would too. I would hate also, to see, watch the show without her, but I would love to yeah, see because, her like, blossom. She well, could appear I mean, on some New York Bravo shows. You could go to Summer House. Okay. Go to the Hamptons. Way to throw in a little wrenchy. Those little girlies. Is it? Is it? Is okay. it? Schwartz doing Winter House. He ha- he was on it last season. He was on it with Tom Sandoval. They went right? on together. Yes. It was very weird. And they went on right after Katie had told Tom that she wanted a divorce, but he wasn't telling everyone. He wasn't telling anyone, uh, but he told the cameras. They let him do little confessionals, and he was like, yeah, so the thing that no one knows is that Katie actually asked me I always love it when people on reality TV do that. No one knows this. I'm like, you're literally telling telling the world. world. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, ugh. Like, now they do. Cats out of the bag. Okay. All right. I don't know. Any... Final thoughts? Shout out to the production team at Vanderpump Rules. They did some good work. Their editors have always been fucking phenomenal. It's work. one of the best edited reality TV shows, I think, in the game. This... They're really close to Allie and her sizzles. Aww. Yeah. They Aww. could never. No, they probably could. Uh, I don't <laughs> no, stay neck yeah, and neck. Yeah, we, we appreciate Your you unique know, talent. Sizzles, You're yeah. a once in a generation talent. <laughs> <laughs> once in a generation. Well, it's, it's time to say goodbye to season 10 of Vanderpump Rules. That season game. Honestly, Anything. I am so relieved. I am over it. I wish everyone to move on. I think they're all over it. Yeah. You know, like. Time for, uh, time for the Bachelorette. Uh, which, uh, by the way, next week we're going to do uh, part one of the Bachelorette men's bios with a friend of show, Elise Guilfoyle. Uh, love her, and we love her commentary on all things. She slays. Uh, she slays. She slays. She slays. Uh, Natalie Joy and Elise will be with us. Not the uh, government. Yeah. Oh my God. Not the government. Not my fiance calling me by my government. Uh, <laughs> kind of hot. What? Kind of hot. What? You call me by my government. I don't even know my government that. name. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's the first time I've heard this. I'm gonna come clean. You <laughs> is want to take it back? Up to date? Is this is this the gov- government? Is this like? Yeah. Why do yeah. I sound like I'm 40 million years old? Government name. But do people say my government all the time? Or um, are you, you innovating on TikTok? No, I feel like that. I think is you're innovating. Thing. Am I innovating? <gasps> Good for you. Everyone's you- going to tell me I'm not. So I'm just not going to read the comments because they're going to be like, I didn't come up with that. I've seen it 500 times before. Okay. But First I've heard it. I don't know where I heard it from. I feel like I have just started saying it like okay. I do with a lot of words. All right. Well, we will be breaking down the men's bios, having fun uh, with their photos and their uh, fun facts about themselves. Uh, that will be uh, next Tuesday on Freestyle Part 1. Oh, and then on Going Deep. Next week, we have Danielle Fisher Carp from Boy Meets World. Also, I think a big Bachelor fan. Oh, just a general reality TV fan. I'm sure we'll get into all her uh, uh, her guilty pleasures and you know, catch up with her, see what's going on in life with her. Lots to get into with her. Also, if you are starving of Vanderpump content, don't forget that we will be recapping uh, all of Vanderpump going back to season one on Vile Files Plus. So be sure to sign up for Vile Files Plus. You can do so. You just go to vilefiles.com. Uh, sign up's really easy. You get a seven day free trial so you can, you know, stream some episodes, see what you think about it. Nick and I are going to put a sex tape on it. Yeah. There we go. 
Sales. She's trying it's, to pay for it. I will tell you, it's audio only. So <laughs> this would be an audio only sex tape that you and have I'm aware. Leaking. Yeah, and I am aware. Okay. Thank you. I understand the assignment. Yes. That's all I Got need. It. It's uh, all I need. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Oh, by the way, we have an episode of Better Date Than Never tonight. We're talking about one night stands. Basically, or seven we... month affairs, because apparently it's really easy yeah. to confuse the two. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, <laughs> check us out live tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. We will see you there. It's a ton of fun. Make some friends. Bye. 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 Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.